Hey, Mr. Fitz here. Hope you're going well. This short little video, I'm going to teach you how to draw a basic pinion gear in on shape. So let's get started. First of all, always double check when you've created your account in on shape that you ensure your preferences are set to millimeter um, and all other metric settings in here. So you should have millimeters. The most important one is that one there. And then return back to your account. So let's create a file, create document. Let's call this one rack and pinion two. I've got one created already here. All right. So if you're a new user to Onshape, I'd always encourage you to work through our other tutorials that show you the basics. Uh, but just as a reminder, down the bottom on the left here, you're going to find a part studio. This is where we're going to build a part, which will start by building a, a pinion gear. Um, and then also this little area here is for an assembly. When we build our next one in the next video, we're going to add a new part studio to build the rack. All right, here we go. Everything we do in CAD, we start with a sketch. I'm going to do a sketch by clicking on sketch. Choosing a plane, I'm going to use the top plane. It doesn't matter which plane you use. I'm now drawing on this top face. To navigate, I'm going to click top on the right here. So I'm looking straight down at that plane. Always encourage you to use a mouse so you can zoom in and out using the mouse roller. All right, I'm going to start by really simple by just by drawing a circle. Now this pinion gear from my design and my sketches is going to be 35 millimeters. So just draw it rough. Doesn't matter if that's exactly when you sketch it. So we're going to come in here and we're going to add a dimension. Click on the outside of the circle. You see that activates the dimension. Click once more to place it and type in 35. You press enter you don't have to write millimeters it should know that you're in millimeters as long as your settings are set for that way okay with that sketch still active i don't have to close my sketch um, or click on the tick i'm just going to go ahead and press on extrude and this is going to build my shape now i can't see it in this view because i'm looking straight down if i click the corner of my box here you'll see it will flip it around or i can press my right mouse button to rotate the view so I'm going to change my depth. Whoop. Sorry, I'm going to, just going to change the depth here to 10 millimeters. That's going to be the thickness of my gear. Um, and just click on the tick to finish that. There we go. First part of my shape. All right, next, I'm going to model up one of the teeth of my gear. So to do that, again, I create a sketch. So you can see here, I've already got a sketch and extrude. I'm going to build another sketch. Click on sketch. Now make sure you click on the face of the gear so that there is going to be the face of the gear and now i'm sketching on that top face again i can click my view to look straight down now what i want to do here just roughly and try and do this at the top is click on my circle to just model up a basic gear so here we go click click make sure you click to close it it doesn't matter that this is overlapping that's fine so just to go back a step on the line tool in my sketch, I'm going to click on the outside circle. You can see it assumes that I want to snap to my circle. Click to do that, drag it up, click again to place it where I want that part of my gear to go. Try and go horizontal. You can see here the little horizontal icon pops up. Click again, drag this down. I don't want this to be vertical. It's going to have a bit of a taper. Click back on the circle and then once more to close that loop. Cool. There we go. Press escape to get out of the line tool or just click on the line tool icon. Now, at any point in time, you can click and move things that are blue. So I'm just clicking and dragging. You can see that things are moving according to their constraints. Now, I need to add some information in here because my tooth doesn't have any dimensions um, and it's moving around a weird. So, first of all, this bottom line here. I want this to be horizontal, just like this one here is. Now, when I sketched it, it didn't make it horizontal. So what I can do is I can click on this little arrow and go horizontal. You can see the explanation there. Click on that, and then I can click on that line to make it horizontal. Cool, that's looking better. Press escape to get out of that one. Also, I know for this thing to be symmetrical, I want this edge and this edge to be the same length. So I can click on the arrow and I can find the geometric constraint called equal. Click on that edge and on that edge and that will make them equal. Cool. 
Now when I move it, it's starting to do roughly what I want it to do. You can see it's a little bit weird, but that's about what I want it to look like. Next step is to put in some actual geometric dimensions. So to dimension this, I'm going to click on the dimension tool. I'm going to go from that top line to there. That's going to basically be the height of my tooth. So make that 5.5 high. I'm going to dimension the width at the top, which is going to equal 3. And the base here is going to equal 6. So you can see there, that's the rough dimensions of my gear. This now has all the information it needs. If I press escape on my dimension tool, I can't move anything on my sketch because everything is what we call constrained. And that turns black when it's like that. Now, repeat of the first process to turn this into a three-dimensional tooth. You can see I rotate it. It's currently just a sketch on a face. I need to extrude this. So click extrude. Now, for some reason, when I press extrude, it wants to shoot off this direction. You can see that's not the right way to go. So this little arrow here changes the direction of my extrude. And you can see it's trying to go 25 mil into the distance. Now I can come in and change this to 10. And you can see there, if I press enter, it's going to go to the depth. But even more intelligently, I can change from a blind end type to up to face. What this will do is it'll extrude forever until it hits a face. Now I'm going to choose a face. So with that blue, I'm going to click on there and it's going to go to there. Excellent. That's a little bit better. If I ever change my part thickness, it'll fix my tooth thickness as well. Click on the tick to approve that. All right, beautiful. I've now got my first tooth. Now the next tool I'm going to use is a really powerful one. It's called a circular pattern and you'll find that here. So linear pattern is the default. I want a circular pattern. All right, now at this stage, you can kind of notice here that my planes can get in the way a little bit. If they start to annoy you, you can always just turn those off by clicking over here. So for now, I'm just going to turn them off so I don't accidentally click them. All right, circular pattern tool. Really important here. The default, which is a little bit annoying, is that the pattern type is a part pattern. Really, really important you change from a part pattern to a feature pattern. Part pattern's great if you want to duplicate the entire solid body here, but in this case, I just want to duplicate the tooth, which is a feature. So with this blue, whatever's blue, that's the actual tab I'm in now. So choosing a feature to pattern. I can either click on extrude two, which is the tooth in the table here or I can even click it out on the screen. Next, I can click on here, choose the axis of the pattern. Now this is gonna be for a circular pattern, you need to choose a, essentially a line or an axis in order to spin around your design. Um, I need to, I, what I can do is choose a cylindrical face. So this cylinder here, if I click the outside of that, what it does is it grabs the theoretical axis through the middle, and that's what I wanna do. All right, cool, that's looking better. So there's four teeth there. You can see the angle, that's how many degrees I'm going to go around. The instant count is four. Now I need more teeth than that, so I'm going to try to grab 12. What you need to check with your teeth is that the shape in the negative here should be roughly the, the tooth inverse. So if you imagine the tooth upside down in there, it's roughly what you're trying to achieve. If I go 13, that might just fit probably a bit tight, so I'm going to go 12, and that looks about right for my tooth. Now, one last thing to do, I don't quite understand this one, but you need to apply, apply per instance, tick that, that ensures that it, it generates a solid and it joins it for each of those. That looks good, click on the tick to finish that off. There we go, there's my most part of my opinion. Right, the last step for this little gear is I need to cut out a hole in the center which is going to be what's going to fit on your output shaft of your motor. So let's go sketch again. You get used to the process of sketching, always sketch. Okay, choose the face. I'm going to sketch on this plane. Now I'm going to bring back one of my planes. Front, right, doesn't really matter. I'm going to use front and right just to, so I can see my axes here. Now, to 
just take a closer note in your design of your output shaft you need to measure the size and the shape of it i'm just going to model mine roughly but you need to actually go and check specifically the size so, so start again i'm going to do a circle i'm going to pin my circle to the middle here so the center point is going to be fixed to my origin my output shaft's got two vertical lines on the side so just make sure that as you're sketching it it's creating two vertical lines if they're not vertical you can always come in and assign a vertical constraint to it so you can see here i've got two lines now i do want to make these equal so that line and that line equal i'm then going to put a dimension on this outside circle which is actually going to be four millimeters and then the dimension between these two lines is going to be two millimeters in fact 2.5 i think it was you need to check yours mine is based on my motor now i just want to cut out this area here not this outside bit so i can click on the trim tool trim tool is really useful for tidying out your sketch i'm going to click on that that'll delete that and that'll delete that and that's my shape two parallel lines and a cir circular feature there now this time i'm going to extrude you can see that so far in this design we've extruded a solid i'm going to change that and remove so this is cutting a hole through your part and again i could choose 25 is fine it's going to keep cutting through it but i'm going to make it nicer and go up to face which is there and that tidies it up beautiful finish that off and there is your pinion gear you can turn off your things there now one last little thing to do here if i go part one over here if i right click and rename i'm going to call this solid the pinion so that's the name of the part which is this one here that's going to be useful when we do our assembly all right there it is there's your pinion gear for your design you obviously can change your dimensions and your teeth What's really nice about this is that if I do want to come back and change anything, I can right click my original sketch, change my diameter. I can right click my extrude one, that changes the thickness of my part. So I could make this one say six millimeters if I decide to change the thickness. Click on the tick and you'll see that everything updates as you need it. Beautiful. That is my design. Cheers for watching.